First speaker of the, this afternoon is Peter Summers, Managing Director and Executive uh, um, Board Member of the Belgian Post and uh, running the Belgian Post International Business. He has over 20 years of in-depth experience in the postal and logistic markets. He joined 2004, uh, sorry, 2000 um, Belgian Post and was director of the press distribution business and uh, Delta Media. He, he knows really about the difficult business. He was so successful turning it successfully around. So he was promoted to Sons 4 Managing Director of the division. In 2007, he joins the executive committee and driving now, right now, and the new strategy, it's the Belgian Post into the international arena. We are more than happy to have you with us, Peter, and the floor is yours. Thank you very much. And remember, please, your phone's out, otherwise you're winning the lottery, which means that you have to pay something. Thank you very much. Thank you. Good afternoon, everybody. The most difficult session of the day, that's the one after lunch. So I'm happy to have this one. I'm going to tell you a little bit how a post, a small post in a declining market and in a monopoly is changing itself, becoming much more profitable and fight in other continents to gain market share there. But let me first give you a little bit our view on the postal world of today. I don't have to tell you that the economic crisis is not yet over. And you have different viewpoints on it. You have people who are telling we see the first signs of recovery. Well, I think we in Europe, we don't see it yet. Because what is happening in Greece for the moment uh, puts Europe under pressure. And maybe we will face a double dip in the economy instead of a recovery. Certainly in the postal volumes, we don't see a recovery for the moment. But let me first give you my view on what is changing today in the postal world. First of all, we see that the postal world is becoming more competitive. We have existing competitors, which are already today in the parcel, in the newspaper delivery, in the unaddressed distribution. These are markets that are already open for competition since a couple of years. The international cross-border mail and cross-border parcels are open for competition today. But the new competitors are the electronic substitution, and this is a difficult one to grasp. It's much more invisible. And certainly 2011, where the market in Europe will be open. Will that be a success? Will monopolies disappear? Will competitors really become successful? We don't know first signs are not that positive because you see that a lot of newcomers in the market really suffer against the incumbents. So will competition really happen in Europe? We don't know. The jury is out. I don't have to repeat it, but this is the future probably of the postal companies. Today the postal companies deliver mail and from time to time a parcel but I think maybe in 10 years it will be the other way around. We will deliver parcels and from time to time a mail piece. That will change dramatically our companies, our structures. What you see there is that EU online purchase increased from 20% to 37% on average the last five years. There are examples in Europe who have online purchase of 63% last year, like the Netherlands. Belgium is at 36, it's at the average. That means if Belgium suddenly would buy at the same speed as the Netherlands, we would probably double our parcel industry in one shot. The global turnover of e-commerce last year was 325 billion US dollars, and it grew by 10% even in an economic downturn. That's new industry for us. But at the same time, we see that volumes suffer. On average, we believe last year in Europe, mail volumes declined with 5% domestically. And on average, we lost 10% in volumes in the international cross-border business. We saw, and that's for us a good barometer, because competition is not really there in Belgium. So we can really measure what other posts around the globe send to us. And we have seen that last year, towards Belgium, 
we lost 9% of volume. It's gone. And I give you some examples of important traders to Belgium who lost volume. Germany sent us last year 17% less volume. Italy, 20%. France, minus 9%. Spain, 22%. And last but not least, the USPS, 29% volume that is gone in one year. These are dramatic figures. The only post who was shipping us more in volume last year was Royal Mail. And the reason is the low pound currency that is bringing people to buy online in the UK and that helps Royal Mail to increase their figures. But that's a dramatic view on volumes last year. Will it recover? Will we win them back? We don't know. Let us now have a look how posts cope with this challenge of volume decline. And I will show you the financial results of some major posts in Europe and also the USPS after nine, years, after nine months in 2009. And what you see is that they all lost revenue. And that only one is increasing its profit, except also Belgium Post. This is something strange to look at, because what is happening, only 5% of volume is gone. And all the major posts lose revenue and lose margin, with 5% of volume that is gone in one year. What will happen in the next coming years when we will lose each year 5% of our volume? Economic downturn or e-substitution? We don't know. But it's a speed that can happen year after year. <coughs> now a few words about Belgian Post. Why were we, were we able to sustain our profit the last couple of years? First of all, because we changed our company dramatically. Ten years ago, when I joined the Belgian Post in the year 2000, that company was almost bankrupt. We had no computer systems at that time in the company. We had a cash bookkeeping. We didn't have an, even had a P&L. We were not organized. We didn't have process management. We didn't have project management. Even sales and marketing culture was not there. The reason why, because the politics didn't initiate a change project for their company, for their postal company. In the meantime, we turn around the company dramatically, and today we see that we are a profitable company and we're sustaining our profit. And what happened to do that? First of all, we increased our quality and customer satisfaction. We modernized the culture of the company and the employee satisfaction. We increased efficiency and, prof and, and productivity and very important cost control. And also we grew via new initiatives and acquisitions. I'll come back to that later. Here you see the pipeline and all the different uh, changes we made in our company since 2002. I highlight one, which is also the shareholdership that changed. In the year 2005, the management board had a discussion with the minister in charge for the Belgian Post, and we said, look, liberalization is coming up. We also want to change the shareholdership of the company, because we believe that in a liberalized market, it's not right that the state is 100% owned of the company. We want to privatize. And the minister at that time said, OK, you can do it, but you need profitability. Three years profitability, and then you can go for a privatization, and we did. And in 2006, we closed a partnership with a joint venture of a CVC, a venture capitalist, and Post Denmark. And that helped us to change dramatically the culture of the company. Because 100% estate, it's a different decision-making body than a partnership where it's 50% estate and 50% private partners because there they took the decisions which were good for the future of the company. The results are here. 
We were loss making in the year 2003, and since then, we increased our EBIT results, we increased our operational margin, and we increased our productivity, here explained in revenues per FTE. How are we able to do that? Well, we decreased our staff with 15,000 people. We came from 45,000 employees in the year 2000, and now we're just under 30,000 people. So 15,000 people are gone and only via attrition. So we have social peace, peace in the valley, and in the meantime, reorganize everything in the company. And this gives this result. And also in 2009, we could go on with the increase of our profitability, mainly due to very strong cost control. So, a small country, in the meantime profitable, in a declining market, and surrounded by the big four, all looking after liberalization, what is going to happen in the Belgian market. Will the Germans invade? Will the Dutch invade? Will the English, the French, what are they going to do? Because we're surrounded by big four posts and we are a small market. So the only thing we can do to grow, and that's what at the end we want to do, is to expand. And here's some explanation of our strategy. If you want to expand, I think you need a very clear strategy and a very clear plan. And we started our plan in 2002 and the first thing we did is the turnaround in Belgium. At that time, again 2002, the company was in bad shape. And also the international unit was in bad shape. Customers were not satisfied, no process management. We lost uh, volumes to the competition. Everybody was there, Swiss Post was there, DHL was there, the French Post, Royal Mail at that time. They're all in our market and we were not ready and we lost volumes. So we changed completely our units, we increased our quality, we put it in place a dedicated team, and we won back volumes. So we created a turnaround first in our home country. Get the basics right. Once this was done, we said, if the competition can be successful in our market, why can't we offer the same in their markets? And then we started to expand to the neighboring countries. Why the neighboring countries? Well, it's easy just cross the border. You don't even need a plane. You can do it by truck or by train. Yeah? And you can sell in their markets. And if you take the surrounding counties of Belgium, and Belgium, it's 60% of the mail volume in Europe. So interesting markets. There we attacked the markets and one market share, one volume. Once that was done, in phase three, we expanded to, we expanded further in Europe and then went also to North America. Why North America? Because, let's say, the entry cost in America to attack the wholesale market was low. We could easily enter the market, offer a good product to Europe, and attract new customers, only in the wholesale market. And that's what we did for a couple of years. But we also wanted to look at the retail market. And that's the reason why we recently acquired MSI, MSI who is a, a mail and service provider based in Washington, Chicago and Toronto. And via that acquisition, we now can enter the retail market in the US and expand from there. It's a strategy that we start now in North America, but we also deploy it in other countries. And then, of course, phase four is become a global operator. We will not be active in every country around the globe, absolutely not. But we are active in Europe, we are now active in North America, and we will certainly expand to other regions, and Asia is the first on the list. So expanding is something I think most of the posts need to do in a declining market. And for that you need a clear strategic plan, which we had. You need to offer high quality versus low cost. You need to explore new markets, a balanced customer mix versus wholesale and retail, and at the end, it's new product development. Let me come to my conclusions of what happened in the world and how we cope with that. I believe that the current economic crisis is causing an even greater decline in volume 
than declines we already had seen in the past as a result of electronic substitution. We know in Belgium that we lost around 2% a year since 2002 due to economic substitution. We now see that we lost 5%. So that's a mix of electronic and substitution and volume decline due to the economy. If this trend continues, that means that we lose 50% of our volume in the next 10 years, after 10 years. If we lose 50% of our volume, we become a different type of company. So that means that we as postal companies, we need to start now to prepare ourselves to create a new type of company. That new type of company will not become a mail company anymore. That should become a communication company or a parcel delivery company, but not a mail company. What we have seen is that today, most of the postal operators are not capable to cope with 5% volume decline. So how are they going to tackle the next 5%, 10%, 15% in the coming years. And at the same time, change dramatically their company structure. That's the question I ask. For us, the only right answer is cost control. We as postal companies, and I think that's in every industry, 5% volume decline should not be a problem. We should be able to solve that and keep your profit line stable. We hope that the e-commerce will change the negative trend of volume decline for postal companies. We have seen the figures, you hear it everywhere. We also see in our figures the big increase in e-commerce trade and hopefully that will bring new volumes for our industry. Thank you very much.